Good morning, TGIT2. No, TGITU. <laughs> TGITU. Uh, thank goodness it's Tuesday. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm trying. I'm trying to be clever, and then that's what happens. TGIT too. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning, my friends. Kim. Good morning. Happy to Tuesday. I feel like it's Blur's Day. I don't know. I think it's because we 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 had a busy weekend, and now I'm kind of like, what day? I really thought today was Wednesday when I woke up. I don't know. Robin, good morning. Nicole, good morning. Charmaine, good morning. Robin, I believe you have a birthday coming up here in the next uh, couple of weeks, in the next week-ish. Uh, am I right on that? I think I am. I think I am. Corey, good morning, coach. Good morning, Corey. Karen, good morning. I love it. Uh, milk foam on point today. As a matter of fact, uh, it's going down really fast today. I have been using Tammy's um, trick tip. I froth it on the cold setting and then I froth it on the hot setting and it has been spectacular. Spectacular. Uh, Amy, good morning. Alyssa, good morning. Sue, hello. <laughs> Robin, yes, 65. I would never guess that, Robin. I would never in a million years guest 65. Uh, kudos to you. Kudos to you, mama. I love it. Tammy, good morning. Tammy, I was just sharing your frothing tips. Your frothing tips. <laughs> I use whole milk, about a third of a cup. I use a tablespoon of syrup in my milk foam, and it is delicious. I love it. Deanna, good morning. Tammy, I love it. Lisa, good morning. Lisa, Lisa from vacation. Lisa from vacation. I love that. Katie, good morning. Happy to Tuesday. <laughs> Nicole, good morning. I want to follow that up with something, but I've got nothing. I've got nothing, honestly. Uh, Susan, good morning from St. George Island. Still on vacation. Where is St. George Island? I don't know where that is. Hootsack, good morning again. Carrie, good morning. I love it. I love it. All right, my friends. Let's get into it today. I really loved yesterday's chat talking about habits and things like that. It really got, Monica, good morning. It got me thinking about the things I like to let go. And I keep looking around the house at like, I've got to, there was stuff I just let go yesterday because I wanted to do other things, uh, which is so funny based on my talk. And I'm like, today I gotta, I gotta pull the sleeves up and I gotta, I gotta dig in and get the hard stuff done. Uh, Susan in Florida. Okay. That's what I thought. Very cool. Amy, good morning near Tallahassee. I gotta get my, <laughs> I have to get my map out and start looking around. <laughs> Kimberly, good morning. Today's talk, we're talking about writing a life story worth living. A lot of times we think because we're just a mom, we're just a wife, that we don't have the ability to write this amazing, crazy life story. And we do. We do. Uh, you know, you don't have to do something crazy to write a life story. You just have to do something you're passionate about. Uh, Amy, yesterday I ate a lot of frogs off my list. I like that. I like it a lot. Today's gonna be my frog eating day. Today is going to be my frog eating day. I, so I'm digressing here a little bit. When Wilhelmina lived here at home, I felt the need to keep the house much cleaner. And I think that was because maybe, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't even know why I should try and, and dissect that. I don't know. But I did. I kept the house much cleaner. The bathrooms were cleaner. The dishes were, I won't say always done, but done a lot. And I felt like maybe I was trying to set it because now that she's not here, I'm okay letting things go a day longer than I would have. So it's time to probably snap out of that and get back to it. <laughs> get back to it. Um, so, okay, so back to writing your life story. Again, 
we think it has to be this crazy, like that we don't really have a story worth telling unless we've been, been through something crazy or done something crazy. That just is not true. It's not true. It all comes down to being really passionate about what you're doing. You can be a passionate mom. You can be a passionate wife. You can be a passionate dog owner, but being passionate is what's really writing the story of your life. It doesn't matter what it is that you do. Dee Dee, good morning. Um, you, know, uh, you know, I talk about moms and I talk about wives. You could be single. You can be out there, you can be single, and you can still and you can be writing the most amazing story of your life. You don't have to be anything to do that except passionate. And sometimes I think we forget that. We get into the hamster wheel of life, doing everything day in, day out, thinking that it's not important, and it really truly is. I want you to recognize that, that your life story is worth living. Um, you know. Sometimes we're like, what does the world need? Am I doing enough for other people? Because we think that's where our life story is. And it can be. Doing things for other, is ama for other people is amazing, but really it comes down to your heart and what you're doing. What makes you come alive? Um, what every great story has are characters who come alive in the pursuit of something that inspires them. Are you inspired to be a great mom? Are you inspired to be a great wife? Are you inspired to be, be awesome at being single? What are you inspired to do? Maybe it's your job. I know that after we're at, at a job for a, for a while, we start to lose that motivation and that inspiration. That can be your life story. Find your passion for it again. Find your passion. Sometimes we think that we have to jump from job to job or relationship to relationship, new car, new car, new home, new home, and that somehow that will keep our passion alive. It just isn't. Passion comes from inside. It doesn't matter what the outside looks like. It comes from inside. So, you know, you have to work hard on that passion. You have to work hard on your green grass, right? They say the grass is always greener over there. Start working on this green grass. Be passionate about keeping your grass beautifully green. And that's where your life story is written. Every day, you're writing a sentence in your story. Every day, you're writing a sentence in your story. What is your sentence saying? Is your sentence going to be inspiring, motivating? Are you, well, are you gonna be the villain in your story? You get to decide. Nobody else does. Nobody else has the pen to your story. Lots of people like to think they have the pens to someone else's stories, but they don't. And you have to remember that. You are the one writing that story, my friend. You have to break out of the comfort zone. You gotta break out of it, become comfortable, with the new and unfamiliar. And now you might be thinking, well, Roxanne, I'm a mom and I pretty much do the same thing day in and day out. How do you do something a little bit differently? How do you get a little bit uncomfortable? How do you get something that's a little bit new and unfamiliar? Only you know what that is. Only you know what that is. Is it something inside your home? Is it something outside of your home? You're writing the story. It's easy to get in the doldrums. Maybe it's getting up 15 minutes earlier and starting to exercise, starting to write something, starting to read something, maybe making the kids a different kind of breakfast. Maybe it's something as simple in that, as that, but it's something that's going to push you outside of your comfort zone. Deanna, yes, we as women are really good at wanting other things or other people to make us feel whole when really it needs to be our own selves, God, to make us feel whole and worthy. Amen to that. You And as she said, you are in charge of your own narrative. Yes, we like, and you know, sometimes it's easy to sit back and be in that hamster wheel and believe that it's we're doing it because of the kids. We're doing it because of our spouse. It is you. It is you. You get to take charge of that story. Um, you get to dream big. You get to pursue your passions. Maybe there's something you've been wanting to do and it's been on the back burner forever because you're busy raising kids. You're busy being the wife. You're busy going to work. But maybe there's something on the back burner that you've always wanted to do. Maybe you get up 15 minutes early tomorrow and you start 
Maybe it's research. Maybe it's something that you start writing down in a journal. But you're never going to get there if you don't start with it, my friends. If you don't start, you give yourself permission to work towards the future you are able to create. You have to give yourself permission. I can't give you permission. Your spouse isn't going, your spouse, who cares if they give you permission? Get out there and do it. Your children, do not ever take permission from your children. <laughs> you give them permission. Don't take permission from them because your children are always going to want to dictate to you how, when, and what. And that is how we get entitled children. Don't let your children tell you when they want to eat, how they want to eat, and what they want to eat. You are the writer of their story until they turn 18. You get to write that story. You get to be the forward in their story. And when they turn 18, they get to write that beautiful story themselves, full of failures, full of heartbreak, until they reach success, until they reach the love of their life. They're going to go through it all just like we are, my friends, just like we are. My unique path, we all have that unique path. I had to write, I have, I have so many notes, my friends. I have notebooks full of notes here. My unique path involves a passion for God. My unique path involves a passion for my family, for a healthy lifestyle, for leading, for getting out and speaking in front of people, for my dogs. That is my passion. That is my unique story. What's yours? Do you even look at it like a unique story? You should. You should. You should. You should. Um, all right. Let me, let me get to some more of my notes here. Uh, you are not in this world to live up to the expectations of others, nor should you expect that of anybody else. You should not expect people to live up to your expectations. That's not what we were put on this earth to do. Like I said, we all have our own unique stories. We all have our own unique passions. And we the only expectations we should be living up to are our own. And if you don't have those expectations, it's time to jot some down. What are your expectations of yourself? There's a million possible paths up the mountain of life. You get to choose the path you take and you get to choose the time when it's time to hop paths. Maybe it's time to choose a different path. You get to choose that. Nobody gets to choose that for you. Dina, I went from a job that I worked 20 years and they were 12 hours a day plus 10 hours on Friday, 58 hours. Now I work at Walmart working 34 hours a week. I love that. I love that. I talk about my future all the time. If and when I don't, I am not in this landscape anymore, I, I might work in a coffee shop. Why? I love coffee. I love people. I will never be the boss. <laughs> I will never be the boss because I don't love being a boss. I am not passionate about being a boss, but I am passionate about a lot of things. And when the time in my life shifts, I will do something that I am passionate about. I will do something I'm passionate about. And I hope that you are all living that life right now for yourself. That said, choose that path. And when it's time to hop paths, go ahead. The only mistake you could possibly make is standing still. That's it. That's the only mistake you can make is standing still and watching people walk the path next to you walk the path next to you in the pursuit of their passions and you're just standing there watching it all happen. The wisest, most loving people in the world are the people who have known failure, defeat, and suffering. They are the most well-rounded people in the world. Why? Because they have found their way out of that despair. They, I feel like that's why I am able to be where I am right now. I have had a crazy life. There has been suffering. There has been defeat. There has been lots of failure. There's been lots of foam shop. I'm going to run a foam shop. <laughs> There's been lots of tears in my life. There's been lots of heartache in my life. It ranges from relationships down to my children, down to losing animals, down to losing business, down to losing clients. There's been everything and anything under the sun. And I have felt it. My heart has 
felt it. But that's why now I feel like I've gained compassion. I can have compassion. I can have understanding. I have, I feel like I have the deepest sense of gratitude because I have been at the bottom. I have been, I have hit rock bottom and I feel like I've hit it more than once in my life. And that's why I am so grateful for every little thing out there. When it's so funny, when Chuck and I go for a walk, I walk around going, taking in the smells. I'm so grateful for the ability to have a body that allows me to get out and walk, that I have a job that allows me that there are certain times of the day if I want to go take a lunch break walk, I can. If it's before work, if it's after work, I'm just so grateful that I have the ability to do that. Not everybody does. Not everybody feels safe enough to get out and take a walk. And I want to make sure that I recognize that every time I have an opportunity. You know, are you somebody who's going through a tough time right now? It's in those moments that the best of our story can be written. It truly, truly is. Are you going through a tough time right now? Is there something in your life that's making your heart ache? Is there something in your life that's leaving tears in your eyes? This is where the best of your story can be written. Because this is where all of the little things that you are grateful for can come together if you see them and make one big, gigantic thing to be grateful for. All the little grateful things, all of them. Could you imagine a life without them? When we're going through a tough time and it's hard to see through the tough time, take time to recognize even the littlest of things. The littlest of things, my friends, that's sometimes what can write the whole story. Your life story won't end. Your life story when you're on your deathbed is not going to end with what you ate. It's not going to end with how much you worked out. It's not going to end with what size you are. So as well, those things are great and they're hopefully going to provide a longer life for you. They aren't writing your life story. They are not writing your life story and they, not, they might not even be the sentence in your story today. So they're going to say, you had a zest for life. That's what they're gonna say on your deathbed. When you're out there hiking the mountains, when you're out there slamming your smoothie and you're energetic and you're excited for the day to come, they're gonna say you had a zest for life. They're not gonna remember all of these little things all of the things that you ate, all of the things that you worked out. They're not gonna remember that. They're gonna say you had a zest for life. What life story are you writing? Are you appreciating the little things on your life journey? Are you appreciating or are you trying to hop from pasture to pasture to pasture? It's okay to go from path to path. Not because the grass is greener, but because your passions are changing. Don't jump to the greener pastures because you think it's going to be a better life. The life you're creating right now, the grass you're watering right now is going to bring you that life story, my friends. All right, that's where I wanna leave things today. You know, life is so amazing. I just want you guys to make sure that you are hanging on and that you are appreciating it. All of you on here are taking steps every day to create a healthier lifestyle. And I want you to remember why you're doing that and not getting stuck on things like the scale, not getting stuck on things like the size of your pants, not getting stuck on anything like that on the outer. I want you to look at this long term, that this is just what's creating your life story, that your children are going to see you energetic, happy, positive, and living to the best of your abilities, because that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. All right, my friends, join Coach Chuck at noon for his new nugget. I'm going to be back tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Uh, what else is happening? I don't know. I don't know. Go out and enjoy this wonderful, brisk, 40 degree day. We're not going to have many more of these until next, what, winter? So get out there and enjoy it today. Get out there and smell the brisk air. Let it cleanse your face. All right, my friends, I love you all. Go out and have a fantastic day and write down the sentence of your story today. All right, have an awesome day.